Uh, good morning. Uh, in this class, we will discuss uh, what is the role of efficiency, that is, propulsive efficiency as well as well as uh, the overall efficiency for both uh, air breathing and non-air breathing engines. Okay. Uh, but before we do go there, I just wanted to ask you this question. Let's say we use a rocket motor inside water for a torpedo. Is it going to be useful or do you think it is not going to be very effective? What is your opinion? To understand first, for an underwater torpedo, if you are looking at uh, using a rocket motor, torpedoes usually have a propeller driven system. If we use a torpedo with a rocket engine instead, do you think it is going to be very effective or not going to be effective? Not effective. Not effective. Okay. Let us see as we go along in this class, uh, what is the uh, reasons and what whether it is going to be effective or not. Okay. Now, firstly, uh, just to recollect that if you are looking at an aircraft engine, you can consider it as a box. An air breathing engine you can consider it as a box wherein you are inputting certain mass flow rate of fuel and uh, certain mass flow rate of air comes in through the inlet at m dot a v a and p a and this goes out the mass flow rate is m dot a plus m dot f and v e be the velocity and let p e be the pressure here and ambient pressure be P A. Now, we know that the thrust of this air breathing engine would be m dot A into 1 plus f V E minus V A Okay. <coughs> now, F is nothing but ratio of mass flow rate of fuel to mass flow rate of air. Typically, for aircraft engines, we had seen this. For stoichiometric, it is around 0 0.067, but usually we operate it less than that. So, it is around going to be around 0 0.02 to 0.03. So, f is we can make an assumption that f is very much less than 1 and therefore, neglect this part. Neglecting this part, the error is typically of the order of 2 to 3 percent only. Okay. So, if we neglect this part and if we also neglect the pressure thrust component which is usually small in aircraft engines. Uh, so, neglecting pressure thrust and using F being very much less than 1, we get f is equal to m dot a v e minus v a as the 
thrust equation. This is the thrust equation that we are going to use in this class for all the further calculations that we do okay. And similarly for rockets for non air breathing engines we can assume this is a box right where the pressure at this point is pe ambient pressure is pa and m dot is the mass flow rate and ve is the velocity remember rocket motor or a non air breathing engine carries its own fuel and oxidizer therefore it doesn't depend on air flow through it okay and there is no intake as such all the mass that uh, is needed to be thrown out is generated inside the rocket motor itself. So here again thrust we had derived this expression before as m dot v e plus a e p e minus p a right. Now again if we assume that the contribution of pressure thrust is small then we can write thrust for a rocket motor as m dot v e okay now notice that V e is very similar to some other quantity that we had defined earlier called I s right. So we get this expression for thrust and this is the expression that we are going to use in this class for rocket motors this is the thrust and for air breathing engines this is the thrust that we are going to use okay fine. Now if you look at let us say we have this much of energy in a air breathing engine as well as in a non air breathing engine what we have is chemical energy stored in the propellant or the fuel right and that is converted into uh, heat and then to kinetic energy right. So uh, if we are going to look at efficiencies we have to consider what is the input energy the input energy is the chemical energy that is stored in the in the fuel or propellants right now a part of this not all of this chemical energy is going to be usefully converted only a part of it is going to be usefully converted to the power that we require or the thrust power that we call it at. Now uh, you know from thermodynamics that uh, you cannot have a system that can operate without with only uh, one reservoir right you need two reservoirs one high temperature reservoir and one low temperature reservoir and heat must be lost to a low temperature reservoir. So here also we have to lose heat to a low temperature reservoir so because of the cycle the particular cycle that we follow we are going to lose certain amount of energy due to this. Let me call this as unavailable 
energy. Okay. So, this is because you have to lose heat to any cycle that you take, even if you take Carnot cycle, reversible Carnot cycle, the efficiency cannot be 1, right, because you need to lose heat to a low temperature reservoir. And therefore, uh, even if you look at the Carnot cycles, you will have something like this, Carnot cycle efficiency is eta is given by T h or 1 minus T l by T h. This is temperature of the low ter, uh, temperature reservoir and this is the temperature of the high temperature reservoir. So, it has to lose heat to a low temperature reservoir and therefore, this cannot be 0. Therefore, you have efficiency is less than 1. So, this component takes care of that. Now, all the remaining energy that is available cannot also be converted to useful propulsive power. A part of it goes in the uh, stream is lost in the stream as kinetic energy. Unutilized okay. and only the remaining portion is the useful in producing the propulsive effect. Okay. <coughs> now, we will design define something known as thrust power. We will define something known as thrust power okay. thrust power is nothing but F into <coughs> V A okay. and uh, this is the portion that we are talking about. Now, what is the unutilized kinetic energy? or the power lost in the jet that is given by mass flow rate m dot a into this is the power lost in the jet. So, if we are looking at defining something known as propulsive efficiency, this will be propulsive efficiency will be nothing but this divided by this entire quantity okay fine so that is fva divided by fva plus m dot a ve minus ve square minus ve square by Okay. 
So now how do we go about further simplifying this? We know that thrust is F is equal to nothing but m dot a into V e minus V a. So we can use that here okay V e minus V a V e square minus V a square we can use that as this is nothing but if I take out m dot V e minus e a V a it will be V e plus V a by 2. So I will get propulsive efficiency if I take this as Now I can cancel out all the f's. So if I cancel out all the f's, I will be left with propulsive efficiency is equal to 2 Va divided by 2 sorry there was a small mistake and you did not correct me. The power lost in the jet is not this V e minus V a whole square. So if I take that into account I will get here if I take out this I will get this changes to V e minus V a by Okay. So now I will get V e plus V a. I will define a ratio called R which is nothing but ratio of velocities given by V a by V e. I will define R which is ratio of velocities and using this I will get if I put it propulsive efficiency in terms of R, I will get 2R by 1 plus R. Okay. And similarly, I can write thrust also in terms of R as. F is nothing but m dot V e into 1 minus R. Okay. Now let us see how this varies with R. What will when will this be maximum? When will eta p be a maximum? when r is 1 right when r is 1 it will be a maximum and if you look at this expression here thrust will go to 0 when r is equal to 1. So let us plot that
this has to be m dot a v e. So, if I plot f by m dot a v e and eta p on the same axis y axis versus r, how does eta p vary? Let us say this is r equal to 0, this is r equal to 1 and this is 1 here. So, this is the variation of eta p. What happens to f? f is as r keeps on increasing f decreases. So, you get a straight line and it goes to 0 at this point. Okay. So, this is the variation of So, if we go beyond r of 1, then the thrust produced will become negative and therefore has no meaning, right. It has no meaning beyond this point and r less than 1 is the regime that we are looking at and if you look at this r is equal to 1, it goes to 0. So, we cannot be at this point. We have to be somewhere here such that you have a sufficiently large thrust and your propulsive efficiency is also high. Okay. Now, if you remember when we were discussing about turboprops, I made a mention that turboprops are devices wherein m dot a is increased and the velocity differential is reduced. In order to get the same thrust, you can do it two ways. You can either increase m dot a or you can increase v e minus v a. If you increase v e minus v a, then the propulsive efficiency goes down. Okay. So, you are uh, turboprops will have higher propulsive efficiency because of this. So, if you have r of around point four four, you will get eta p of around something like 74 percent. Okay. This is propulsive efficiency for aircraft engines. Let us look at what is the propulsive efficiency for rocket engines. Sorry, I do not think this is the right number for aircraft engines. I'll, this is for rockets for aircrafts if f is equal to 70 kilo newtons and v a is equal to 800 kilometers per hour and v e is equal to 1800 kilometers per hour possible because the nozzle is choked at a higher temperature right so you have higher speeds at the exit then you get a propulsive efficiency of around 61.5% with this Okay. Now, let us look at what is the relationship for propulsive efficiency for rockets. Now, again for rockets 
propulsive efficiency is thrust into velocity that is thrust power divided by thrust power plus kinetic energy lost in the jet okay now here uh, we know that f is a nothing but m dot into v e right so if we substitute this expression here we get eta p is equal to m dot v e minus v e v a and if I bring the 2 from the denominator here divided by 2 m dot v e v a plus m dot v e minus v e square plus v a square minus 2 v e v a. Okay. Now, this and this cancels out right 2 m dot v e v a with a minus sign and 2 m dot v e v a with a positive sign. So, these two will cancel out and uh, you can also cancel m dots. So, you are left with v e square plus v a square okay. and if we use the same definition for r as r is equal to v a by v e we will get eta p is equal to 2 r divided by 1 plus r square okay. and similarly if I were to write f in terms of r I will get f is equal to there is no r right it is independent of v a. So, therefore, it will not change right. So, this is one of the key parameters here. The thrust of a rocket motor is independent of the ambient velocity uh, or the velocity of the vehicle. Okay. So, <coughs> you get m dot v e or f by m dot v e is always 1 irrespective of what ever is the velocity v a that it is travelling at it still continues to produce thrust. Whereas, in an aircraft engine or an air breathing engine you saw that if the velocity ratio was greater than 1 then the thrust produced would go to negative values or it would mean that there is a drag on the vehicle right. Here it is independent of it and it is always this quantity is always 1. Now, where will this be a maximum propulsive efficiency? How do you determine that? Well, very simple just differentiate with respect to r, you will get 2 r into 0 plus 2 r minus. 2 into 1 plus r square whole square 
this is nothing but 4 r square minus 2 plus minus 2 r square. So, what should go to 0? For this to be a maxima, the derivative must go to maxima or a minima, the derivative must go to 0. So, if you put this to 0, you will get the value of r that is r square is equal to 1 or r is equal to 1 is the value. How do we know that this is a maxima? You take a second derivative, right? That should be if it is a maximum, what should be the second derivative? Should be negative. If you take a second derivative, this would be what will this be? Huh? Okay, find that out. Now, r is 1, and notice in the earlier case, r equal to 1, we got thrust 0 for air breathing case. Now, for rockets, it will still be f by m dot ve would be still 1. So, it is independent of the ambient velocities or the vehicle velocities. So, if I plot it in a different colored chalk, and So, propulsive efficiencies for rockets are typically slightly higher than that of air breathing engines because of the term 1 plus r square here. If you remember it was 1 plus r for air breathing engines, r being less than 1 it will always this term will be smaller compared to 1 plus r. Therefore, you will find propulsive efficiencies for rockets will be slightly higher than those for air breathing engines. So, propulsive efficiency is higher, why should not we use uh, rockets is the question we will try to look at. Okay. Now, coming back to the question that I had asked you right at the beginning, suppose we were to use a rocket motor to run a, a torpedo whether that would be useful or to get, take the exhaust from the rocket motor, run a turbine and connect that turbine to the propeller and let the propeller do the work on the fluid, would that be useful? Okay. Let us see that. Now, let us assume the mass flow rate m dot to be around 0.7 kg per second. Now, if this were to make this were used as a gas generator 
and made to power a propeller the thrust produced would be typically something like would be around 16 kilo newtons at something like 80 kilometer per hour. Remember water is you are looking at a torpedo and water is what kind of a fluid incompressible fluid right or compressibility effects are very very small you need to go to very high velocities in order to get to that right. So, <coughs> we would be typically operating at very low velocities here. <coughs> so, now this is the thrust that is produced if it is if this kind of flow rate is given to a propeller. Now, let us say we were not doing that and we were giving we were directly throwing out the exhaust. This is the situation wherein you have a gas generator or a combustor here and this is made to run a turbine, turbine is connected to a propeller and the propeller powers the vehicle forward. Okay. Now, instead of this you can also opt for another system wherein it is just like a rocket motor just only the combustor and you have a CD nozzle right. Let me call this situation 1 and I will call this situation 2. Here if I have the same mass flow rate going through just a conversion diversion nozzle I will get a thrust this depends on exit velocities for a rocket motor if you remember it depends on exit velocities V e. So, f is nothing but m dot V e in this case V e is around 2300 meters per second. So, I get a thrust of 0.7 into that is somewhere around 1.6 kilo newtons. Okay. Now, if you look at this, this number is one tenth of this right. How did this happen? The answer lies again in propulsive efficiency. If you look at the R and propulsive efficiency. If you look at R and propulsive efficiencies for the two situations, <coughs> for this one the actual V A would be something like 22 meters per second. Okay. So, you take R as V A by V E that is 22 by 2300 around 0.01 and if you calculate propulsive efficiency you will get eta p is equal to around 0.02. So, most of the thrust 
or most of the useful power here is lost in the as the kinetic energy of the exhaust gases okay it's not used usefully so it will always be better if you do this propulsive efficiency wise so if you were to make a statement from based on this you will say that it would be ridiculous to use rockets for torpedoes right but uh, russians do have a uh, top secret uh, torpedo that uh, they call as squall it is pronounced as squall which uses a rocket motor and therefore it goes at a speed of 100 meters per second or 360 kilometers per hour and its range is something like 6 to 4 kilometers very short range right and it goes very fast the other torpedoes comparable ones are uh, something like have a very small velocities compared to this torpedo speeds are of the order of 10 half of this okay this is because the other torpedoes use uh, the first kind of mode and a squall uses this kind of so it can go at a very high velocities but remember if you go at very high velocities the drag inside water will be enormous so they use something known as super cavitating flow wherein they produce gas bubbles in front of the vehicle if this is the vehicle If this is the vehicle and this is the uh, exhaust they produce they have a gas bubble generator and produce gas bubbles all over this place right in front of it so that the drag on the vehicle is less because now you are looking at something like a two phase flow it is not pure water so the viscous drag will reduce and therefore they can make this kind of velocities right otherwise typically you don't find anybody using scenario 2 to power a torpedo because a lot of uh, useful power is lost in only the kinetic energy of the jet okay, okay. now let us move on and look at what is the overall efficiency okay. look at okay. again going back to our figure this was unavailable energy and <coughs> you had unutilized kinetic energy lastly 
you had the propulsive effect right and this was chemical energy stored in the fuel or propellant ok. <coughs> so, if I want to calculate uh, thermal efficiency what should I look at what is thermal efficiency here propulsive efficiency was this quantity divided by this quantity. So, similarly what is thermal efficiency hmm? thermal efficiency is if you take output power as F V A that is this part plus this part and you divide it by this one right. This gives you the thermal efficiency remember I also earlier mentioned about uh, uh, Carnot cycle efficiencies and why this loss is there right. So, and uh, the chemical energy stored in fuel is or the input power is m dot f into q right. This is this portion and we are looking at this portion right. <coughs> In addition to this we also need to add one more term there is a power that is required to carry or transport the fuel remember these are flying systems and they cannot be powered like systems on ground they have to be lifted up and carried along with the vehicle. So, there is a, a power that needs to be added to this and that is m dot f V a square by 2. This quantity is small if you look at aircraft engines compared to the compared to this this is small for aircraft engines, but it is really not small in terms of rocket engines this quantity will be large for rocket engines ok. So, from this we can find that thermal efficiency thermal efficiency is F V A plus M dot A this is the expression for thermal efficiency right and this expression holds for both aircraft and for air breathing as well as non air breathing
No function. Okay. Uh, we'll stop here. In the next class, we'll look at what is the overall efficiency and what role does it play in terms of uh, the range of the aircraft and other things. Okay. Fine. We'll stop. Here. Thank you.